So what's going on guys, KDC here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best smash build in Black Meat Wukong. So our build's primary objective is to charge heavy attacks while sprinting and retaining focus after a perfect dodge. So then we could quickly fill up the bar and do massive amounts of damage. Unlike my other builds, this setup will emphasize on talents, gear and skills that will focus more on survivability, speed, stamina recovery and high damage hits. So it will be extremely hard for the enemy to hit us, because we will have constantly 100% stamina, plus relatively high defenses, while still at the same time doing massive amounts of DPS. This build is great for both leveling and endgame, because even after level 100 I still use it. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So let's take a look at the best setup, and first of all we have the transformation, and the best one to use is the Red Tides, because it deals significant burn damage to bosses. Moreover, dodging in any direction and following that up with a heavy attack will perform a powerful move when you have full focus. This fits the theme of our build, which is mobility and high damage with speed. The Red Tides allows you to transform into a wolf and inflict Scorch Bane on the enemy with each attack. Light attacks with this spell will have you constantly slash at the enemy, with each hit building up your focus. Therefore, unlocking and leveling the Moon Realm will allow your heavy attacks to hit harder, after you execute a perfect dodge while at full focus. This may be a combination that is difficult to execute at first, but when you do, you will do huge amount of damage. The next up we have the Staff Stances, and for this build I mainly recommend to use the Smash Stance. The best talents and skills are Force and Bound, Resolute Counter Flow and Peace from Peril. Force Unbound enables sharing while sprinting, while Peace from Peril enables your focus to be retained after a perfect dodge. This allows you to constantly charge heavy attacks, unless at the perfect time. And finally, the Resolute Counter Flow enables a combo that deals very high damage, and is very helpful as a defensive tool as well. The next up, let's take a look at the best foundation setup. Simeonian Agility, Endurance and Deft Evasion are the best foundation skills for a Smash Stance build. All three aid in survivability via the dodging and sprinting. Simeonian reduces cost, Endurance reduces spirit cost and Deft Evasion makes the initial dodge create more space. I would recommend to progress these three by taking passives earlier in the game and then switch to the survival at level 50 plus for more damage passives. Next up we have the Curious. And for this build, the best curious is the fine giant T Bell and the back scratcher. They are the best fit for our smash build because they increase the max stamina and stamina recovery rate. These two will help in survivability by using dodge and sprinting to avoid attacks. I would recommend as you progress to higher levels to swap these curious for more damage oriented, like the Maitreus Orb, Gold Spike Plate, and the Cat Eyes Beads. And for all of them, I've already made a video, so check it out. The next up we have the Spirit, and the best spirit for fighting bosses is the Vandering Vite, because it deals damage the most and can knock back enemies once upgraded. The Vandering White Spirit can give you another stun to complement the Immobilize, when you have your QI built up, therefore you can Immobilize with the mana to hold the creature, and then stun it when in close range with the Vandering Vite. This combo gives you control and damage, while playing in a smash melee range. Then for one of the last parts of our build we have the Relic. The main Relic that I recommend is the Fuming Ears Relic, with the Whistling Winds passive, because of the increased damage when performing a perfect dodge. Dodging is the most important mechanic in the game, and this gives you an offensive bonus when avoiding attacks. Moreover, this Relic can be obtained very early, and is helpful throughout the game. Next up we have the gear and items that we should use and I recommend to start with the Golden Armor set and the Spike Shaft Staff. Golden Armor boosts the focus generation, attack damage after using a spirit, and your QI gains. Therefore you can generate more unique resources, combining focus attacks with spirits for massive damage. The Golden Armor has a 2 and 4 piece bonus, along with a unique effect on the mask. So we want to equip the Fireproof Mantle, then the Golden Mask of Fury, Golden Embroidered Shirt, Golden Arm Guard and the Golden Greaves, and then for the staff, the Spike Shaft Staff, which grants us focus after seeing through the enemies, and this pairs very well with the Resolute Counter Flow skill. You can get all of these items after completing the Chapter 3. Next up, let's move over to the best spells, 
and we will mainly use the Immobilize, Cloud Step and once in a while a Plague of Many. Immobilize lets you stun enemies, keeping them in one spot, which is useful even against tough bosses. You can make the stun last longer and deal more damage to those enemies, making it a critical spell for controlling single targets. In this setup we will focus on the talents like the Stagnation, Crash and Easy Prey to get most out of this skill. Then our Cloud Step spell is useful for the mobility aspect of creating distance away from the boss. You can use it both to attack or escape, and with the right talents, you can boost your critical hit chance or serve as a surprise attack. It also pairs well with a stamina based dodging for quick and agile maneuvers. For Cloud Step, the best talents are Gallop, Converging Clouds and the Concealing Observation. And finally, the Pluck of Many spell creates clones for yourself to act as a decoy, but it uses a lot of mana and has a long cooldown and is not very effective overall. Plus casting it takes a while, leaving you vulnerable. So it's better to save your mana for more useful spells, like the Immobilize and Cloud Step, and only use the Pluck of Many occasionally. One good time to use it is before a fight, when you need a distraction to start off your combo. But however, if you use it often, then consider getting the Long Strand, Grey Hair and Synergy Talents. This will help you to make the duplicates last longer, and be more durable in harder boss fights. Then next up we have the Gourds, and the best one for our build is the Trailblazer Scarlet, because the first sip will replenish our HP to full. Moreover, you can add additional effects with the soaks and drinks, giving you even more bonuses. So for the bonus passives, I recommend to get the Pearl Veined Peach Pit, which massively increases health recovery from using the Gourd when at critical health, or the Steel Ginseng, which upon using the Gourd, instantly gains a moderate amount of additional focus. And now last but not the least, we have come to the gameplay part. Every boss fight will be different, but I will try to summarize the overall experience. To effectively play a Smash Dance build, we want to focus on defensive playstyle, that optimizes dodge cast reduction, stamina regeneration and Smash Dance talents. So we mainly want to build up our focus points, by charging heavy attacks while moving. Then unleash powerful strikes on the unsuspected enemies. And on top of that, we can use the Immobilize spell to control bosses and deal damage safely, without the fear of retaliation. The number one rule is to charge your heavy attacks while sprinting, to conserve stamina and avoid incoming damage. Then we want to deal damage when we need to combine light attacks, heavy attacks and combos for maximum damage output. We should prioritize building focus points during combat, to enhance the effectiveness of our heavy attacks. Then for ranged damage we can switch to the Trust Stance or use our Spirit Abilities when you need to attack from a distance. Then as well, incorporating ranged attacks keeps you versatile and allows you to adapt to a different combat situation. Therefore for survival and mobility we rely on dodging and sprinting, and the Cloud Step ability to maintain distance from enemies and to evade attacks. We as well want to use the Cloud Step alongside dodging to utilize mana and stamina to create space and reposition during fights. I would recommend practicing timing your dodges accurately by learning enemy attack patterns to execute perfect evasions instead of just spamming dodge like most players do. And last but not the least, for healing and sustain, use your gourd item to restore health during and between battles. And don't forget to keep improving your soaks as you progress through the game to enhance your healing capabilities and the overall survivability. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you are doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one, so take it easy, peace.